You're the good height today, Miss Parker. Yeah, I'm trying to get a full... What are you doing? Uh, uh, I'm uh, trying to help you. I'm, I'm not comfortable. Put your hands down. Please. Please stop. No. No. Stop. Ah! Ah! Gosh, this naughty feminist nearly killed me for offering to get her a folder. Unbelievable. I was so scared about what could happen next. When Ellie came out of the archive, she saw condemning looks. She was sure that everyone had hated her and was afraid of her. The worst thing is that she knew for sure nobody would believe her. Who am I? And you be? An intern? Bradley Johnson has the reputation. He has experience. Everybody loves him. And me, I'm just an outcast. And the worst thing, I couldn't believe it happened on the day of my presentation. What could be worse? Suddenly, Ellie noticed that the director of the company, Mrs. Grace, was standing afar and watching what was happening. But here, what was worse? A question was in her eyes. How could you? I was really disappointed. After all that had happened, Ellie felt dirty. With half an hour left for the presentation, she knew for sure that she had lost the support of her colleagues and could rely only on herself. I had to speak in front of people who thought that I just beat a man. People who fear, despise, hate me. I didn't know either I could handle it. Ellie's main competitor at the presentation was that very same man, Bradley Johnson. He also had to defend his project today, but his experience was enough for him not to worry. He was confident of his success. What should I worry about? I'm not Ellie Parker. There were five minutes left before the presentation. All the employees gathered in the conference room. Ellie rehearsed her speech in her mind and convinced herself that everything would be okay. How wrong she was. Bradley entered the hall. Oh, very pretty. Good luck. I think it was fair. I'm talking with a bruised eye. Let her talk without glasses. An eye for an eye. Good afternoon, everyone. Let's get started. I can see nothing without my glasses. Nothing at all. Not even faces, let alone letters and slides. So, um, the, the marketing... Uh, the marketing strategy of our company should go from... I, I tried to talk. I tried to pretend that everything was fine. But everything seemed to put pressure on me. You see, if it, it was if I, if I was naked in front of the whole crowd. Okay, people, I propose we take a 15-minute break, and in that time, the next speaker can prepare for their presentation. Will that be you, Brady Johnson? Yes, ma'am. Great. I think people like you should not have their own projects. They should only do what they're told. Okay? And uh, if you do want to have a project, come to my office in a short skirt and we will discuss it. He made me understand that I'm nothing, that I can never achieve anything on my own, only through his casting coach. 
And uh, by the way, Mrs. Grace wants to see you in her office. Have a nice day. I was sure that I'd be fired now. Your presentation was terrible, Ellie. I know, Mrs. Grace. I just... I know what really happened in the archive. Why didn't you tell anyone? I thought they wouldn't believe me. I was ashamed and scared. Ellie, Ellie listen. When I was 22, and I just started here as an intern, one guy decided to make me his doll. Back then, there was no one to protect me, and I got out of the mess by standing up for myself. Now it's your turn, Ellie. Remember, you are strong, self-sufficient, successful. Don't let arrogant idiots ruin your life, your reputation, your career. You need to stand up for yourself and teach people like Bradley Johnson a lesson. Otherwise, it will happen over and over again. I know, I understand, but, but now, what can I do now? Right now, you are holding all the cards. It's your turn. When everyone took their place, Bradley started pitching his new project. He looked confident and proud of himself, as always. The presentation went well. I was ready to beat everyone. After Ellie's failure, that was dead easy. Does anybody have any questions? Mr. Johnson, yes. you seem to have forgotten another slide, the most important one. May I? When all the employees saw the footage from the security camera hidden in the archive, clearly showing an incident of harassment towards Ellie, a depressing silence hung in the hall. This video has definitely been edited. This nasty Ellie has set it all up. Mr. Johnson, you presented yourself very well, but you're fired. But, uh, but I... Oh, and also, Mr. Johnson, this tape has been already sent to your wife. When I was younger, I heard stories about harassment and humiliation more than once. These stories always sounded as though they came from another universe. But one day, I became a victim of harassment and it was really frightening. I, I completely froze. I was in shock, had no idea what to do. But then it became clear that it was impossible for me to remain silent. After all, silence serves no one. If we keep silent, the vicious cycle of humiliation and abuse goes on. These abusers continue to break down our mothers, daughters, sisters, girlfriends, colleagues, loved ones. And you will probably never know the truth because 95% of victims never lodge a formal complaint. 75% never tell managers or employers. It's a common belief that this experience is a dirty, embarrassing one. And this is why victims choose to remain silent. Every 73 seconds, one American is assaulted. Every nine minutes, a child becomes a new victim. If you have ever been assaulted in the workplace, don't keep silent. Tell a manager, write a statement, contact your support team. But most importantly, don't be afraid to speak up for yourself. These abusers around the world need to understand that no means no. Stop means stop.